All right, so we got a big pile of parts over here. We got some parts over there. You've got a box of parts here that aren't even for me. Got all excited and thought uh, I'd ordered a bunch of goodies I forgot about. So, uh, started looking at this stuff and it's all for 71 to 73 Mustang. Fortunately, I don't have one of those, so I'll have to find the uh, proper owner for these. Anyways, let's uh, open this stuff up and see what we got going on here. Alright, so this box here looks like uh, stuff I actually ordered. It's the uh, cab corner there. These were uh, surprisingly cheap, I think uh, 20, 30 bucks a side, so I wasn't going to waste my time trying to make my own. So I got uh, both sides for those. And might tackle that this summer. I think we're probably going to pull the box off the truck. Um, just hoist it up and then I can uh, get in there and replace the cab corners, paint the frame, and uh, do a few other things in the back there. I also got uh, a set of the rubber seals for the inner fenders, which are down there. I got both sides. This wasn't worth salvaging my old ones. I'm probably going to sell off the driver's side ones in good shape. For the cost, it was worth going with some new ones here. And then I also got a bag of the uh, cable straps for the wiring harness. Both styles, the black clips and then the uh, ones that tape the harness and press in. So I'll use a few of these. These are cheap. Uh, I think they're about 10 cents a piece. So we use a few of these to get everything in there for now. And then when we do the new wiring harness, we'll swap all that out. Then over on the bench here, I got the new uh, Grant steering wheel showed up. We went with the 966, same one I had in the Mustang. It's the uh, classic series. I already mocked that up in the truck. We're going to have. Uh, few issues there so I'll show you what we got going on and we'll try and get that fixed up this week and then I uh snagged myself an original radio um kind of a fluke that I found this an ad popped up on marketplace for a uh, grill for a 69 f100 and I just happened to click on the seller's profile to see if they had any other parts sure enough they had the radio I've been looking for uh screaming deal um it was a ways away from me so I couldn't get down there to get it and I've got to say, if you're uh, into cars at all, you probably all know this, but car people and car club people are really the best. Um, I posted a message on our chat group, see if anybody in our car club was going to be passing by the area, able to grab this for me. And I had a response within three minutes from a woman who lived uh, just up the road from there. She went down and grabbed it for me, brought it up for me here yesterday. So it saved me about two, two and a half hours of driving. And with the cost of fuel right now, that's definitely uh, not a bad thing. So I'm going to go through, clean this up. I'll be able to sell this bezel off because I'm not going to need that. So if anybody needs one of those, let me know. But I've already got the original one in the truck, and I'd like to keep keep the original bit with the truck. So pretty cool. Not sure if this even works. I didn't even bother asking. I just needed to fill the hole in the dash. But it's real deal from 1969. I also went and picked this up the other day. It's one of these cheap uh, pro tax. Reason being, I was watching a video the other day. I think it was actually uh, Thunderhead 289. If you haven't checked out his channel, he's got some pretty cool uh, old Fords there. Um, and I think in his Maverick, he was driving around. It's got this tack in there. And that's the exact one I had in my Mustang. I knew I had a, a Blackface uh, larger tack in there, but I couldn't remember exactly what I had. But as soon as I saw his lit up driving around at night, it reminded me that that was the one I had. So I'm going to grab this. I had a gift card anyway, so it didn't cost me a dime. I'll show you a few tricks for uh, doing a fairly clean install on these. Typically, most people just worm drive clamp them on there, and that's what we're going to do. But there's a little trick to make that a little less noticeable. And the truck did have this chrome white face tack in there. Plastic's getting brittle. The pointer snapped off there so I'll, I'll stick this in my spare parts bin or see if somebody needs a tack I can always uh, pass that along so let's pop out take a look at that steering wheel and uh, I'll show you what we've run into there so that's the wheel there pretty happy with how it looks definitely gives the uh, feel of the Mustang that we were looking for 
The thing I'm not too happy about is uh, when they shipped this, it was just in that white box with a thin piece of uh, packing foam. But the uh, horn button was rattling around in the box there, and it uh, added a little bit of character to the back side there, but no damage on the front. I'm going to reach out to the seller and see if they can do anything about that, but being that this is going to be a patina muscle truck kind of deal, not too uh, concerned about that. So the issue I'm having, and like I said, positive, I had the same issue with the Mustang. That was probably 20 years ago that I installed one on that. But from what I remember, I always had an issue with the horn button. Uh, pretty typical with these, anybody that you've ever talked to, it's had one of these Grant Wood wheels will tell you the same thing. Um, this is kind of the first issue we have. I don't remember having that issue on the Mustang, but the issue is the bolts. The ones that ship with the adapter kit are quite short fine thread which I, of course I don't have any of those in stock here I keep a uh, good selection of coarse thread the hole on this fiber disc is a bit oversized so it allows it to, to slop around in there and with them being too short it puts the metal ring on the back there too close um, you can see your little tabs here to actuate your horn and Grant just ships these with these little foam pads that you stick on there and as you can see just with the bolts in there just barely snug They've already squished down to the point that these are almost touching. So it's a common issue with these is horn will start going off, especially in the summer. This foam heats up and the weight of the ring will push it down and the bottom one will make contact. So I think what I'm going to do is get some longer quarter inch fine thread bolts. Um, I consider going up a size to make a little snugger on this, but one inch will do, but I may get some inch and a quarter. I can cut them down and that way I can bottom them out in the hole so that they don't back off on me. And then I think I'm just going to sleeve the, uh, the bolt itself with some tubing um, just to eliminate the slop around that way. I also have some heavier foam tape. Uh, it was actually the stuff I used on the sandblasting cabinet there, if you've seen that video. I used it on the door, and it's quite a bit thicker. I think it's uh, 5 eighths. It's a bit firmer of a material. So hopefully with that, we can push this ring out just a little bit more. Um, I don't want it too far. You'll have a big gap between your horn ring and the steering wheel. But that's definitely a better option than having a horn that's constantly going to be going off. Um, I know I fought it on the Mustang to the point that uh, on hot summer days, I just uh, disconnect the horns under the hood and um, ran without horns. But we've got to get this truck through inspection and it's going to need uh, a functioning horn to do that. So we'll see if we can fix this right from the get go. And just a quick update on the steering box here. I did get it all bled out, um, jacked up the truck, set it on jack stands, filled it up type F, and uh, took a good bit of bleeding. I was almost worried for a bit. There was kind of a spot on center where you turn the wheel and it would really lock up and chatter, but it was just air in the system. I spent a good uh, 15 minutes bleeding the system, let it sit, bled it a couple more times, and it's beautifully smooth and uh, no leaks so that was a win being that my uh, core support is still on back order no ETA I think while well, we still have the front clip off I'm gonna go ahead and overhaul the front end here uh, when I was bleeding the power steering king pins are fairly sloppy on this this side's not bad but the passenger side there's probably got a good quarter inch of wiggle in it so I've Got the kingpins on order tie rods i've tracked down and uh drag link we'll do the radius arm bushings we'll do the uh pivot bushings on both sides as well and i may even swap out the coils at the same time but we can always do that down the road just figured it'd be easier with inner fenders and everything out of the way gives me a bit more room to work in here well my calendar says it's almost mid-april but the light snow that's coming down says otherwise Power went out too. Just heard a bunch of sirens. That can't be good. So seeing as we're in the dark here, which is uh, nothing unusual for me, I think we'll uh, cut this video here. I did get some of these uh, Whiskey Creek Customs stickers made up. So if you're interested, post a comment down below. You can slap one on your toolbox. You can slap one on your truck. You can even slap one on your forehead. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, see what I can get done here. I just looked, it's a fairly big power outage here. Close to 30,000 people without power, so it's probably gonna be a while.
If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, be sure to click down below. We're coming up pretty close to 100 subscribers here. So in the next video, I'll give you a sneak peek of uh, what we're going to be giving away. And uh, we'll be doing the draw for that pretty quick. So as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hopefully with some power.